Hey, welcome back to Weeby Kids again. Now, I think we've all noticed when we've been around that all the animals in the world have particular relationships with each other. We notice that cats chase mice and dogs chase cats and some animals like to live in barns like sheep and pigs and cows, while some live in stables like horses. And there are also some animals that live off in the forest too. But it hasn't always been like this. And I've often wondered why it is like this. And in today's story, which is an old Polish folk tale called What Happened to the Animal's Freedom, I'm going to explain to you how things came to be in this way. So a long, long, long time ago, all of the animals lived happily together, out in nature. Sometimes they would walk over the hills together, sometimes they would go into the forest together, and sometimes they would laze out in open meadows by beautiful streams together. And all of the animals had their freedom. None of them paid any service to humans. And it is said that each of the animal's freedom depended on a parchment just like this one. A parchment that was scrolled up on brown paper and wrapped with brown string. And inside this parchment, it is said that each animal had written on it all of their history and all of their stories. And it is believed that the parchment is what gave their animals their freedom. Legend has it that if anything ever happened to the parchments, then the animals would lose their history and their freedom. Now one day all the animals were out in the middle of a big open meadow when a big storm came in. There were turbulent winds and heavy rain and the donkeys got together and they tried to protect the parchments, but some of them got wet. And this made the animals think that they needed a, a better way to take care of the scrolls. So they called for a big meeting and all the animals came together and they said, we need somewhere to put the scrolls, somewhere safer than carrying them around with us. Our whole freedom relies on these scrolls. So the animals were thinking and the dog said, <clears throat> I think if any animal should take care of the scrolls, it should be the cat. Now, let me tell you something about the cat. You see, all the animals have their freedom and they roam far and wide. But the cat, the cat was the only animal that went close to humans. The cat would prowl its way towards humans' houses and it would sit by their windows at night and it would listen of all of their plans and all of their stories. And then it would return back to the animals and boast that, he, that the cat knew more about the world than the animals. Now some of the animals said, we can't let the cat take care of the parchments, it is too close to the humans. But the dog continued, well you see, the cat is lazy, it will lie and sleep by them all day. But the cat is also alert. So if anybody tries to steal them or damage them, the cat will pounce and keep them safe. Now the animals weren't sure about this, but the dog had some good reasoning. So they decided to call for the cat. So the cat came and they said to the cat, would you mind the scrolls? We need somebody who is alert to take care of them. And the cat in its very cat-like manner said, maybe I will, uh, maybe I won't. And it wandered off. And the horse shouted out, well, you've got three days to decide and then we will choose somebody else. And three days later, the cat came back and the cat agreed to take care of the parchments. The cat said, I know the perfect place to put these parchments. It is dry and it is warm and it is safe. The cat went on, 
by one of the houses that I visit, there lives an old professor and he has a room in the top of his house called an attic. I will carry them and place them there. So all the animals agreed and pawful at a time, the cat carried them off and snuck into the house and up into the attic. And in the far corner of the attic, there was a dusty old suitcase and the cat stored them all safely in there. And then the cat fell asleep, because we know that cats are lazy. But once it had had his cat nap, he woke up and it checked the parchments. And then it wandered off into the woods. And every day it would come back and it would sleep by the suitcase and it would check them. And for about three or four weeks, this seemed like a good tactic. Sleeping, walking, checking. But after about a month, the cat got tired of this. Of course the parchments were always safe. Nobody was going to find them up there. So the cat wandered off into the woods and forgot about the parchments. And the cat rejoined the animals and, and the spring turned into summer and the summer into autumn and the autumn into winter and the winter back to the spring. And one day all the animals were out in the meadow and the wolf went over to the cat and said, Cat, how are the parchments? And the cat looked surprised. Um, yes, they're fine, they're fine. Now the, wolf, the wolf suspected that the cat was telling lies, so the wolf said to the cat, Then take me to the parchments to see them. And the cat agreed, but only if one other animal could go too. So they invited the dog. So the dog and the cat and the wolf all headed back to the professor's cottage and they waited until he was out and then they all creeped in through the door and up the stairs and into the attic. And they went across the creaky attic floor to the far corner and there was the suitcase covered with dust. And the cat took its paw and it lifted the suitcase. And there, in the bottom of the suitcase, was nothing but a few old nut husks and bits of tattered brown paper. The wolf was furious. It turned to the dog and it showed its teeth and growled at the dog. And the dog was terrified. It shot out of the attic and down the stairs and it hid underneath the professor's bed. And at this moment, the professor returned as well. And the professor saw the dog hiding under his bed and said, Oh, not only is the cat at my service, but the dog is too. And then he heard a lot of movement up in the attic and he took a step back and there at the top of the attic stairs appeared the wolf with saliva coming from its jaws and mean yellow eyes. The professor grabbed his gun and he took it and he did one shot. <clears throat> and this scared the wolf. And with fear and anger, the wolf shot out of the cottage and into the forest. And the wolf didn't know what to do with all of this fear and this anger and it ran around and it began to chase some of the other creatures. The rabbit and the squirrel and the hare the voles and the mice. When it caught them, with all of its anger and its bitterness, it killed them. Now some of the other creatures had seen all this happening. The sheep, the cows, the horses, the pigs. They didn't want to be attacked by the wolf, so they ran towards where the humans lived. For they knew that they had these big buildings called barns where they kept all of their hay. And they went into the buildings and there they settled down and when the humans found them, they made a deal with them. They said, you are welcome to stay in our barns, but if we are gonna give you shelter and food, then you must work for your keep. And so the animals did, but not all of them. You see, some other animals like the fox and the lynx and the bear, they joined the wolf in the forest and they also began to kill. And back in the house, 
the mice and the cat and the dog remained. But still, to this day, we know that the dog is angry with the cat and it is forever looking for it to give it a piece of its mind. And we also know that the cat is furious with the mice. And that is why cats are forever chasing mice. Dogs are forever chasing cats. All the animals live in the barn, yet some still live in the forest and hunt the small creatures. And that is how we know the animal world today. And it is said that the animal world will remain like that until the parchments are replaced. And the only way the parchments can be replaced is by the history and the stories of the animals being rewritten. For when the animals have their stories and their history, then they can also have their freedom. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Lots and lots and lots of, of little lessons within that story. Especially the idea of people's stories lead to their freedom. But I was telling that, that story to my daughter and, and we said, well, who is going to write the animal's stories? Well, I love writing stories and I'm forever writing and, and putting little stories down. And I'm often inspired by nature and the animals and the trees. So now you've finished watching this story, I would encourage you to go off and write a little animal story of your own. And if writing isn't your thing, that's okay. Draw it in pictures. And if drawing or writing isn't okay, your thing, then just say it orally, just like I am now. But we all have stories within us. And if we can find a way of expressing ourselves and getting our stories out into the world, who knows? we might help the animals get their freedom back. So thanks again for stopping by at Weeby Kids. Many, many stories over at the website, www.weebykids.net. And we hope to see you again sometime soon. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.